I think we're right. Hey, everybody. Good morning, good evening. If you're in the USA, I'm here in Australia and it's a lovely Thursday morning here and I do have a cold, so forgive me for my, the, the sound of my voice. Um, but we're going to be doing some uh, crafting today with Essential Stencil. I've lost a little bit of my, my voice, recovering from a head cold. Hello, Vicky. Hi, Brenda. How are you today? Hi, Patty. And Olive's here. You'll hear her barking in the background. She's sitting out in the sun at the moment, but she's watching people go past. Yes, I have been not very well at all, so I'll probably take a nap after the live sometime <laughs> today. Um, we've got our uh, family here from the USA, so I'm so excited because I'm talking to you guys and I've been talking to my American family all week, so it's so much fun. Um, Essential Stencil has popped in the links right there in the pinned comment for what we're working on today and they are a couple of sets from the brand new uh, I want to say Thanksgiving fall bundle that is out now ready for pre-order and I think that those will be shipping approximately the uh, 30th of August but they are available for pre-ordering right now and we'll go through those really quickly because I know that some of the ambassadors have already been showing you those this week Hello everybody, yes, I'm not feeling well. I mean, I'm feeling okay, but I'm, you hear my voice is just like, eh. So, um, excuse me for that, but we'll see how we go getting through our live today. We've got this one here, a single pumpkins and football sign. I'm just gonna go through these fairly quickly. We've got a few of the small mini six by six. Here's Maple Autumn. These other two I'll show you soon because I'll work on those today. Um, Abundantly Blessed, a two stencil set. We've got this one, which is Pumpkin-y Season, a two stencil set. This one is a porch lena sign, Simply Blessed. You can see how that one works there. It's got some beautiful uh, foliage here, which can be used for all sorts of things. We've got this huge round, which is a turkey round. It's got the gobble, gobble, gobble. And it also has the layers to create this turkey there the home sweet home pie which is very cute i've seen some people using that some of our ambassadors have these sets already and have been showcasing these for you this week scarecrow door hanger again that's a layered set to create a scare scarecrow uh, on a round and oh this one is another favorite of mine it's a single happy thanksgiving a scandinavian kind of look and feel to that one which is really pretty also I like I'd like to be able to use these for something else too I'm trying to think how to use those now if you don't order the bundle but you still want to um, order single sets you can do that too and there are I was going to say prizes there are free gifts for if you purchase over $65 you'll get this set which is these gorgeous little um, grateful thankful blessed signs so that's a free gift for orders over $65 and then for orders over $90 we have the farmhouse truck with footballs in the back let me show you the picture so you've got the footballs in the back now the footballs come with two layers so we've got the football and then you've got the stitching for the football um, in a second layer so that is super cute and that is free gift for over $90 worth of um, purchases. And so thank you, Olive. Yes, we know you're here. Oops, she nearly tripped over my cable here. I'll be working on a couple of projects today using one of these hangers. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Hi, Raquel. How are you today? And also a small canvas. I always come with these little... Uh, wooden wedge things. I'm just going to take that off for right now because it'll annoy me just dangling on there. Olive, settle. She wants to join in whatever's going on outside there. So this is an 8x8 eight eight inch canvas. Um, I sometimes use these to do reverse canvases, but I'm going to show you something that we can do fun today using that. And one of the mini sets. So these, there's two mini sets I'll be using today. One is the Sweet October Pumpkins. And the other one, Fall Farmhouse Apples. Okay. 
So I might get started painting my canvas. Let me just see. I was making sure I could see our live here so I could catch our comments. All right, Olive, time to settle. Settle, 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 settle. Let me see if I can grab her a little chew treat. Come on, come on, in there, in the cage. No, she's not going to go in there, guys. We'll see how she goes. She might just take that treat and run, and she'll keep, it'll at least keep her occupied for a little bit. So let's point the camera down here. See how um, we go with this one. Oh, Laura says it feels like fall there this week. Is anyone getting fall weather now? So here in Australia, we're just finishing our winter season. And when September comes, we are, September 1st is our first day of spring every year. It's just 1st of September. That's what they do. Um, that's what they call it. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting ready for spring. And um, it's honestly feeling very un warm you know, like nice spring and even summer temperatures. I'm using Fusion's mustard colour to just paint on a background here for our, um, for our first sign that we're going to be doing today. So let us know, are you crafting anything today? And um, what, you, what you've been doing? What's the weather like in your neck of the woods? And you'll excuse me if I don't talk too much today, as you can tell, I'm recovering from a cold. You know when you, you lose all sense of everything? Your hearing, your um, taste buds, all the things. But we've been having a bit of fun with our USA family here this week. We took them to our state fair, which we call the Royal exhibition I think they call them over here in our um, capital city of Brisbane which is not far from where we live and so they have a what you would call the state fair we nickname it the ECA which is short for exhibition and um, you know where they show all the animals in the arena and so they have sample show bags and corn dogs we call them Dagwood dogs. <laughs> and so that is at the same time every year here in our city. I'm just painting the background of this canvas in a mustard colour. And then I'm going to go over it with, I'm going to layer a couple of stencils today. So let me see, I'm going to try and catch your comments every now and then. Maggie, you love this mustard colour? Yeah, it's Fusion Mineral Paint. I do love that paint because I sell it here in, as a retailer in Australia. But if you do want it in the US or Canada, you can use my code iRestoreStuff. And there's a link for the Fusion. Um, for my, my affiliate link is right there in the comments that you can grab a hold of that and get 10% off there. Just to thank you for using my code. So that doesn't take too long to just get that layer on. Now you may find, and most most paints, you might need a second coat of um, on there. Oops, I just put my thumb right on there. I've just got to make sure I've got all the edges. So that's a gorgeous mustard colour because that's a real nice fall colour, don't you think? I love mustard as a fall colour. What I did forget to bring is just the um, plastic, I love to use plastic uh, sleeves to just hold my paintbrush in. <clears throat> so I use these little bubble bags that come with packaging and I just cut the tops off them and let all the air out and they make a perfect little bag to put the paintbrush in in case I go over that with a second coat. So I'll pop the hair dryer in now just to give that a quick drying off. Let's see if I can check. If, if you've got any questions about stenciling today or any of the projects we're doing, feel free to ask in the comments. 
we do have a lot of lovely regular people here that check out the lives and um, join in the comments to very helpful answers sometimes or if I see it or sometimes I'll go back through afterwards and uh, and ask and answer questions or well, someone's asking how's Olive doing with the company she loves them she'll bark at the door when when they first get here they're actually staying at my father-in-law's place which is he's just lives not far and so they've been visiting about every day and Olive loves loves Uncle Rich and Auntie Paula <laughs> Okay, so if we did need a second coat, now is probably when you would put that on. But I think that that, for the purpose that we're going to do it today, I'm going to be putting a patterned... Let me show you. Let me just show you what we've got here. This is the stencil set we're working on with this canvas. Sweet October Pumpkins. And it comes with six stencils. Let me show you those. We've got the pumpkin and the sweet October. So some of these elements, remember, you can use for other things. The little leaves be cute. We've got the pumpkin pattern. So there's one pattern. And then we've got a second pattern in here too. Let me find that one. This with the cute little pumpkins. I'm going to be using that today all over this. So I'll show you how we do that and how you can join up to make it go all the way across. Then we've got Happy Harvest with the cute pumpkins. And this one, Pumpkin Farm, a nice cute round. So that's also a fun one to use. So I'm going to be using these two out of this set. And I also wanted to use this set that I showed you before. If you, This is the free gift for any purchases over $65. You get this little set with Grateful, Thankful, full and blessed and so I think we'll use the word thankful today and I want to use that somehow on this set so let's have a look this is the base for this one I think what I'm going to do is just set that aside for just a wee bit and show you how we're going to start on the board here now I will use some tape I'm going to tape off the top here And for this one, we're going to use this set, which is full farmhouse apples. And these are the ones in here. We've got hand-dipped caramel apples. I'm going to use that today. We've got fresh brewed apple cider. We have gorgeous apple. And I like this little checkered pattern in here, because if you can see this top middle one really closely, Look how it just looks like a little picnic tablecloth. I like that. We have this one, apple cobbler. Oof, I love apple cobbler. Farm fresh apples and homemade apple butter. So those are the six that come in that set. And I'll be using this one from that set today. So. I will put this here just to get, gauge an idea because I want to put that in the center and then I'll tape across the top where that is going to stop so that I can paint this board and then we'll let that dry while we work on the other side. Thank you guys so much for sharing our live today and for hitting that little share button, sprinkling out the live, that's what we call it. Um, so that is wonderful. I'm going to do that right now too. I'm just going to hit that little button and then I can, let's see, share it to my page, my I Restore Stuff page. So if you don't follow me already, I, my page is called I Restore Stuff and I love to upcycle furniture and home decor. So I just hit that button and hit the page and then hit share and that shares this live right out to all my people who follow my page and then after I've done that I can just jump right back here on the live and see you all Oop, I've got the sound on <laughs> and 
And what I forgot to do is open the lid. There we go. See how I just slammed it face down, no, top down on the table. It kind of breaks that seal so that we can... Oh, here we go. Now I can see. Oh my goodness, Lisa. Praying for your husband to have a quick recovery from that kidney surgery. Um, thank you so much for sprinkling, Donna. Thank you. Maggie is asking, is my board stained? No, this is not. I've just left it plain and I may do some, some kind of finish afterwards. I'm thinking of just leaving it plain. So I'm going to do the base, the bottom part of this white. Let's see. I didn't bring another proper um, paint brush. Let me just see if I can quickly grab that from in here. See, because I've got my microphone attached, <laughs> you can still hear me when I'm walking to the garage. Okay, so I'm going to do this white. We've got our mustard color one there. This is casement white, another beautiful fusion paint. It's a very popular color because it's um, it's a nice off white, but it's it's very close to a, it's closest to a pure white that they've got. So, and this is like laying down nicely on this. Um, fairly blonde wood. So notice I'm going down away from the painter's tape. You don't want to be dragging the brush this way because you may get leaking paint just underneath that there. We don't want leaking paint underneath. So I'm just going to do the end grain here on the end of the board. Again, just brushing away from the edge so that I don't get drips underneath it and then do a nice smooth finish off there. Now while I've got hardly any paint on the brush I'm actually going to do that top area. Thank you to those who are just joining now. We do have people joining our lives halfway through, or maybe because you've seen me share it on my iRestore stuff page. Welcome, or so maybe someone's shared it to their, their page. Welcome. If you need a stenciling, let us know. We're giving away prizes every weeknight here on the Essential Stencil page. Um, so if you are watching on another page, make sure you're watching on the Essential Stencil page live for a chance of winning three $20 gift vouchers, giving away three lucky winners at the end of our live. And we usually choose those winners from the conversation that goes on here. So make it a good conversation. But do let us know if you're brand new to stenciling, never tried it before, we'd love to know um, if you are interested in stenciling, but you've never tried it before. Essential Stencil also has a beautiful range of rub-on transfers. And so sometimes we'll show those on our lives as well. So that white is looking a little bit translucent. So you can see it's not completely solid in color just yet. So I'm going to pop this brush into a little zippy bag again. It's not a zippy bag. It's just a recycled bag. <coughs> and I'll quickly hit that with the hairdryer. I'll do another coat in a minute. <clears throat> Hello everybody, Elizabeth says she hasn't been here for a long while. I'm so glad you're here now. <laughs> yeah, the brush is really awesome. This one is um, the Klingon brushes, the Klingon um, F30, so they come in different, Klingon has a range of brushes that come in with various different sizes. And you will find those at various retailers in the USA. I stock those over here in Australia, but oh, everyone's got lots of great ideas and great ideas for the new fall stencils as well. I'll just put this one aside. Let's go on with this one and do a little bit of stenciling and we'll kind of switch back and forth between both um, stencil projects so that while one's drying, we can start another. <coughs> now I'm going to use a stencil brush. Let me choose. We've got a couple of different sizes. 
I want a fairly small one. See, this writing is fairly small, so I think we'll just go with something tiny. And this is our half inch brush. Um, and if you do want brushes today, you should be able to get those on the Essential Stencil page also. So see this patterned <coughs> olive? She's obviously finished her treat that I gave her. I'm going to start this one right over here on the edge, and then I'm going to repeat the pattern on each side. And I'll show you how it shouldn't take too long to just swirl around. I'm going to try and do this as straight as I can. And I'm going to just use a rust, a bit of a rust kind of color paint. Oops, that's way too much paint. But I'm going to just add a bit to my brush, offload it here. Until we've hardly got any left on the brush. But I'm going to see, I'm just hoping that it just creates a little bit of a subtle look um, and not completely standing out. But it should still stand out enough to to know what's being said on our little pumpkin words here. So then I just can swirl it around. The reason I can swirl it around like so without getting too much bleeding underneath the stencil is because I've hardly got anything on the brush. So just have a little peek and see, yep, that's working great. So I'm just doing a slight, a light swirling motion round and around with this rust color. Oh, Dee says you've never tried, you mean you've never tried swirling the brush like this? Because some people do stippling like this for stenciling, and that's okay too. But I find that um, with the stippling method, I sometimes get a bit, um, it just looks a bit dotty. And so I find with the swirling, you get a little bit more of a, a nicer coverage on the stenciling itself. We've just got one more little layer here. I'll just add a tiny bit more. Oh, Diana says uh, you'd have to tape. Yeah, we could tape it down also. It would be a great idea. Um, but it's not, it's not going anywhere. I'm holding it still with my left hand and stenciling with my right. Excuse Olive the dog yapping in the background. Olive, come. Come on. Okay, so now I'm going to lift that up and show you. So some areas it's light and some areas it's darker. I could put that down and, oh hang on, I'll show you a bit closer. <laughs> it seems like I've missed a little bit in the middle. But it gives you an idea of just, um, we could create that kind of rustic look all the way across. So it, it dries pretty quickly, the fusion paint. So we're going to just go right across now and then we just need to do down and across a bit more. Now, because we've got this gap here, I need to try and put this right across. Oh, you know what it is? It is across. I just realized this does actually join up. Where is it? Because we've got a PU here and an M. It does finish the word. I wasn't sure if it did, but it actually does. So we've got the letters finishing here. We'll start at the beginning here. So we need to make sure our pumpkin and all the words are lined up right here. So that it looks like it just joins right on, right on in. So I'm trying to make the spacing look as close as I can to what it should be. And again, if you, oh, here we go. There it is. No, I'm trying to find it. Oh, there, I, oh there's a just a minute. Oh, well, that's what can help me line it up. So I don't know if you can see this yet. Let me show you. This word pumpkin, the second line. There's the first part of the letter M right at the end there. And then if I look at it here, I've got the letter N right here on the second line ready to go. So all I have to do is line up this N right on top of where it should be. And then we're good to go the second line. So I didn't notice that before. Now I am going to tape it just a little bit. So we've got that right in the right place, taping it down. So I like how this rust color kind of blends with the background of the mustard color. I think it should work. 
I'm not sure if I've got it too. I may have it a little bit too crooked. Just trying really hard to make sure my spacing is accurate. All right, let's just go with that. Oop. You guys, we can be picky. And no one probably will notice. Sometimes we're just a little bit more fussy and we think, oh, everyone's going to tell, but what someone's looking at a sign. Honestly, this is just the background. No one's going to be looking up close <laughs> to even see if the letters match. Maggie says you'd have to clean it first before matching. Maybe. You could, but then it, it just takes so much time, doesn't it? And I definitely don't have time here on the live to have you sitting around watching me clean and, and wipe and dry. Because and, you do have to have the stencils nice and dry. Um, if they're a bit wet, it's not great either. So adding a little bit more paint to the brush, but only a little. We don't want the key to good stenciling is having hardly any paint on the brush. Yes, Sherry, no one but us normally notices. We can be a little bit too picky. Okay, I think we're done with that line. There we go, see, so we've just joined the two up. If anything, I think I've gone slightly down this way a little bit. <laughs> you can see the gap at the top, just slightly. That's okay. We'll try again down at the bottom. We'll go underneath here. Now, oh, this is tricky because these little uh, pumpkins, we have a different shaped pumpkins here and here. Maybe I should do that and line this up. That's what I should do. So we're looking here. What we can do is line up this pumpkin with this pumpkin here and lay it directly on top of that line because it's going to flow down exactly where it should be after that. So it's almost in line there. And it's just a little bit off because of where I joined this one to this one. So we'll just get this tape, tape it up here. And now we've got our, hmm, it is going to be short on that end. So I am going to have to still do a little bit more over that side. That's okay. See, you're learning while I'm making mistakes, you can just do better. <laughs> um, yes, thanks Mary. Uh, someone was asking where you can get the fusion paints from. Now you can get them at the link that is in the description of the live. It's also in the pinned comment right there in the live itself. If you go to the comments, there's a comment pinned at the top and that has a link to all of the different stencils I'm using today and also to my affiliate link for Fusion, where you can use my code iRestoreStuff and get 10% off um, both stencils and at the Fusion link you can get 10% um, off the paint. So thank you so much for using those <coughs> links. Okay, so it's going off the page or off the canvas down here at the bottom, which is just fine because we want that kind of everywhere all over look. Olive, what is it? I think there's another puppy walking outside. Whenever she sees other dogs walk, going walks, she can see them through the little gap in the door at the front. So she'll run back and forth. I think we're done here. So can you see our pumpkins li lining up down there? I didn't think about that before. We have a little bit of a gap here we have to fill and then we just have to fill this side here. So let me figure out where we're up to right here. Um, oh yeah, there it is. We just did that. So we'll have to go this way with that pumpkin right there. It's going to make it go right off the edge, almost off the edge. I. But all I have to do is this tiny little bit, and I'm not even going to dip the brush in again because I feel like there's enough paint on the brush just to finish that little section. And I'll show you what I mean. See that? It just finished off 
all it was was one letter missing right here. So then we go over this side, and again, we want to line up these pumpkins so we have a look to see where they're at. And there is a pumpkin lined up right there. How are we going to do this, you guys? Um, okay, so I see. We had pumpkin here. If I line that word up here with this pear, I want to call it a pear, but it's that gourd shaped pumpkin that's in that center line of pumpkins right here. And that's it right there. So I'm going to line that up on top of it. And that should, that should get us the rest of our words all matching up down the bottom. So this is how, I'm showing you how to match up your pumpkin words. At the bottom, hang on. Oh, nope. It's a little bit slightly off by the looks of it. Oh no, that is the M. Yes, it is. I had it right. I had it correct. It's the letter N that I was talking about before, right at the end here. So this is going to be a background, and I want to put this gorgeous pumpkin as a silhouette on top. So that's what we'll be doing in a minute. And then we're going to go over here and add another coat. So there you go. This is how to repeat a pattern on the pattern stencils. If your um, canvas or your board or whatever you're using is not quite the length that you need it to be. I mean, if it's you know longer than the stencil itself, you can repeat the pattern. And these patterns make a great idea for backgrounds or you can use them on you know, brown paper and create wrapping paper. You can put them on all sorts of things. Oops, did I just move the stencil? That would be bad. No, nope, we're going okay. It's just a couple of areas here. I think we'll do that. I think we're going okay. There we go. One little runner of here. There, so there we go. We've got our pattern all repeating right here. So that's that one. That's looking cute. So to clean that off, I'll just use some nice warm soapy water, or you can use. <coughs> Um, if you're using the fusion paint, it does stick really well, which is why it's called fusion. Um, you can use some awesome spray. I'll just pop that aside before we do our, stenc our stencil pumpkin. And we just want to go over this with one more coat using this casement white paint. And um, yeah, I hope you've uh, learned something with that. Now, again, we've got this painter's tape here. But you can see the colour isn't quite solid. And I want a nicer solid colour because this is a raw wood. Olive. Olive. Hey, settle. Quiet. Oh, she's really going for it today. Uh, because it's a raw timber, the first coat really just soaks in. Hey, I know you're trying to tell me, darling. Come here. Come. Come on. Let's go. Come here. Olive, come. I'm going to say hello to everybody. I'm going to say hello. Um, so that first coat really soaks in, and then the second coat, once that first coat has sealed, I'm trying to give her that treat. Sorry. Um, yeah, once that first coat sort of seals in the grain, the second coat goes on a lot smoother. There we go. Nice solid white coverage. And then we can take our tape off. And we should have a nice crisp line at the top. You could do a third coat if you wanted to. I think that one will be enough for our for our needs. Just 
looking at the very end here. That end grain is sometimes a little bit trickier to fill. I'm trying to turn it so that you guys can see it. I just had some little areas that weren't quite solid in there. So let's take that tape off now. Should be able to see a nice crisp line. Oop. And then I can hit that with the hairdryer also. Will I do the back? Maggie says. Mm, no, I probably won't. I don't know. You could. You could do the back a different colour. It's got this nice um, beveled edge though, which makes it look like this definitely is the front. But if you wanted to do a seasonal board, you could do the back a different colour, a whole completely different design and change it for different seasons. So yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, let's see. So nice crisp line going on there. Thank you, Mona. <laughs> um, Brenda, the brush I'm using was a Klingon F, F for flat 30. It's one of my favorite brushes to use for furniture painting. It's just got a great um, feel about it. The bristles are all synthetic tapered bristles and it's very smooth to go on so it is nice for laying down paint on boards. Okay, <clears throat> Maggie says you like doing reversibles, yeah great idea. All right so we've got our background here and I did just splatter some white on my, on my new pumpkin board. It might have just flicked from my brush across to this canvas when I was painting white. That's the thing where you've got to be really careful, don't you, when you're doing other projects beside them. Okay, so I've got this and I did say I was going to use one of these. I think thankful would be great. So I might just add out making a silhouette down here and I thought we'd add thankful down the side, something like something like that. We could put this more in the center, but I feel like it kind of blends to a bit of a, maybe this up the top, pumpkin down the middle. There we go. That'll work. So we'll just add a tiny bit of tape here, a little bit of tape here, and we'll add that one in a second. So this one, remember, is um, a free gift for any orders over $65. Stencil brush. Um, we could use a, a little bit of a larger brush this time. This is a 7 8 inch brush or is it, what's this one? The three quarter inch brush, that might be a better size. And I'm going to use coal black, which is a fusion color. Um, it's just a true black. And this will be great for creating a bit of a silhouette look. <clears throat> and so we're just going to go over that again with that swirling motion. And if we do need a second coat, we can always go back over it with a second coat. But um, we'll just do a nice thin coat to start with so that we don't get fuzzy edges or bleeding under. So we've got this big area here to cover. So I'll take a lot off the brush, but we can leave a bit on and then come in from those ends. And fill out this center part here. So being careful because these are long bridges, what we call bridges here on the stencils, we don't want to go sideways too much because, let me see if I can do it, they may lift slightly and we don't want that action to happen. So just be really gentle with those areas and make sure we're going sort of back and forth a little bit instead of too much swirling sideways, you know. So just depending on the stencil, sometimes we just change our actions slightly to make it a bit easier. Okay, so I might leave that there and then we'll come over and do a second coat on this one. Maybe let's see. I can just dry that while the stencil's on it. And you will see it does have good coverage, but I might just need a touch more. It's 
worked out okay. You can sort of still see the pumpkin underneath. Maybe just one more little coat. <coughs> oh, hair dryer not working. We do want to make sure now, um, first coat is dried because sometimes, depending on the background and what you've painted here, if you're doing it on top of another paint, we've got a few layers of paint going on. Sometimes if our paint's not quite dry, that second coat will lift off the first coat. So we don't want that to happen. So just going over now with our second coat and wriggling around those edges to create a nice solid silhouette here. Offloading. Thank you for all your kind comments. We are giving away prizes at the end of our life, so don't go anywhere. Got another project here to finish off. <coughs> and thank you to those who've sprinkled our live out and shared it to your friends and family. Um, I will pop that in a little bag again. Okay, so I want to do, oh yeah, because I'll use this black on my next sign over here that's waiting in the background. So there's our silhouette pumpkin. And then we're going to add this little wording, thankful, down the side here. And then we've got still, oh, there's still some splatters here. I didn't see those before either. That white, when I was doing the white, my brush must have just flicked slightly. It's barely noticeable. Again, one of those things where I'm just probably being picky and nobody will be able to tell. Okay, so thankful is up the side here. Taping that down nicely and we'll just grab that black again. You could choose white if you wanted to. You could do some shadows if you wanted to. Ooh, this one's a little bit close to the edge, so just mind those stencils every now and then. You might get one that's the letter F is really close to the edge, and I don't want my brush to accidentally go over the edge. So I'm going to pop a little bit of tape there for when the bristles just hit over the edge. And then we're nearly finished this one project. <coughs> Pat, you've loved watching and you ne you've never stenciled before. You've ordered your supplies. I can't wait for you to have a go. It is a lot of fun. Can be addictive. Who thinks it, it just crafting in itself in general can be addictive once you get started. I just love creating. I think that's how we were made to create. There we go. Oop, a little, little clip there. So we've got a cute pumpkin with the thankful down the side and that pumpkin uh, pattern in the background. So very cute. Let's just put that aside now. That was the sweet October pumpkin set and the link for that is right there in the description of the live. It comes with six different designs and they're all right there. Now, while I've still got this brush in my hand, <coughs> let's move on to our second board. And we've done our nice white background at the bottom, ready for our cute apples. What is it? Hand-dipped caramel apples. Sign right here in the background. Okay. Super easy. <coughs> Again, I'm going to tape these off and dip our brush in the black paint. This is coal black. Now, I was thinking I might add a little red to the apple down there. 
I know they're caramel dipped, but maybe we could add some red up here. I don't know. But we will do all black for the background and then you could just then add a bit of colour. And the black will give it a little bit of depth, even if we do add colour on top of it. Cheryl says it needs a red apple. I think so too. I do like the black with this um, lettering though. It just makes it look like those old fashioned signs. It makes it stand out nicely. little lines in there whoop I know I've got to be careful not to get on the edges there I nearly went ah I did it again I've gone over I can just touch up those with with some um, black paint but it's almost like I need a bit more tape right there it's a little bit close because I've used a bit of a bigger brush from my last stenciling it's gone a bit close to those edges this has got some little fine details so I'm finding that this brush I'm just gonna have to I maybe could have used a smaller brush, but because I've already put black paint on this one, I didn't want to go over a, a different, choose a different brush and then have to wash another one. But you definitely can do that. I'm seeing these lines go this way, so you can see I go a little bit back and forth here. But the reason I can do that with such um, rigor is because I've offloaded so much paint off the brush onto the cardboard so that it's nice and we call it a dry brush method. So when we swirl it, we've got hardly any paint on the brush. And we will do some red apple down there. How about that? And a little bit more paint on the brush for that wording. 25 cents, you need that nice and solid. And we've got that wording nice and solid by the looks of it. Sometimes you can just pounce and wriggle it in there. Okay. I haven't done a lot down here. I want to do some red on top of that. Let's have a look. I've got this color Winchester. It's kind of a deep red. <clears throat> I didn't want the bright, bright red. I thought deep red's a nice, nice idea. I'll just quickly hit that with the hairdryer. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> and thank you Christy for your lovely words that's wonderful I was going to show you how to seal I'm using because I don't often do that on my lives is use the tough coat sealer to just seal the whole project so I may do that for maybe I'll do that for the canvas just to give you an idea um, little tiny brush let's have a look where's our little brushes and I could use this half inch brush. Pop the black in there. Using a bit of red. Now I need a different cardboard. I think I've filled that one up. To offload just a little bit for our red, a red apple down the bottom there. Oh, it is a bit of a purpley red. <laughs> oh well, it's the only one I have right now. Let's have a look. We're just adding that, just a bit of color. Probably should have the caramel color on the bottom of it, shouldn't it? But that's okay. Let's see how that looks. It's almost a whining, a wine color. Probably a cranberry or Fusion's cranberry would have been a good color to choose for there. That's okay. <clears throat> Let's see what that looks like. It's not too bad. That's cute. What do you think? So you probably can't tell, but I'm going to see it every time I look at it. So there are these tiny weeny little black marks right here of paint. 
hope you can see it's on my fingernail, um, where I just went off the edge. So I can either get a little piece of sandpaper or just touch that up um, with my white casement that I did this on. Now here's a good tip for when you, um, sometimes when you have a scuffed piece of furniture or um, you know something you've painted, if you have a little scuff mark, it's even easier to just get your, um, a dip of your finger in the paint color and blend it with your finger rather than a paintbrush. It can sometimes just, just blend a little easier that way. Wipe it off there. So how cute is that? Now a nice um, burgundy or some colored ribbon on the top would be cute. So let's have a look. I'm quickly going to uh, grab some, we'll dry that off, and I just wanted to show you sealing it with a tough coat sealer. So this is a gloss tough coat, but Fusion does have a matte tough coat. So that's what you want to seal your projects with if you were going to seal them. They don't have to be sealed, but sometimes it just gives it a nice finish. <laughs> If you wanted to, you could stain this board. You could probably stain it beforehand. Um, I've done that before. But this is raw wood, so we'll do a little bit of a sealer on top of that. And the, the gloss isn't too glossy. I'd call it maybe a semi-gloss. But once your project is completely dry, and with um, painting with Fusion Mineral Paint, you would usually uh, you don't have to seal it, but it's an option. So if you wanted to, you could. So let me just do this really quickly before we choose our winners for today. And you could dip this in a little jar. I forgot to bring a jar with me right here on the live. So I'm just going to pour it straight on the canvas and um, seal this. Oop, is it coming out? And it's not resin, it's actual sealer. So I'm going to spread that around. But see how it just really brings a nice... Um, shine to the piece. Well that is actually just because it's wet mainly. So we want to make sure we get right across and again I'm making sure we have no drips because we don't want drips of the sealer running down either side. Don't forget to get your edges and I'll just show you in a minute before I do that other half. You can see which areas you've done and which you, can't, you haven't because the light's shining on this side where I've done that. But you'll see once I once I put the dryer on it to dry that, that it does um, it doesn't dry as glossy as it looks in the looks right now because it's wet. Um, you can see that it's it looks shiny. But it does not take long to seal your project. So those uh, that sealer is also available at the same Fusion link that's in the description of your live there. And I'll just dry that right now and you, you'll sort of see it does add a bit of sheen, but it's not super, super high gloss. So, But then it also, you can get it in a matte if you prefer a matte finish. So the same place you get the Fusion Mineral Paints, you can get the sealers as well. They also have a lovely range of waxes. That one has turned out a little bit more glossy than I thought it was going to. Oops. I almost think I can see some mist bits. Where are we? Where are we? I'll check that afterwards, but yeah. So there you go. It does look slightly glossy. I wasn't thinking it was going to be that glossy. Okay, let's have a look at this one and then we'll be finished. Again, I'm just pouring that straight on, but you can just dip your brush into a, um, into a dish. I mean, pour it into a dish. So see, when it goes on the raw wood, you're sealing the wood as well. So on the raw wood right up here at the top. That's a good way to tell what your um, a good way to tell what your wood will look like once it has a sealer on it is to just get a, a damp cloth and wipe it over the top because 
often people sand their piece of furniture or whatever and they think, oh, I like that look. I want it to look that way. But it will look a little different once it's got a sealer on it. Um, it will look more like the darker colour rather than the lighter colour. I'm just going to grab this end. Excuse me. <coughs> I have my hot tea, lemon, right here beside me, lemon and ginger. <laughs> I will rest after this, guys. Oop. I just want to make sure you've got all those edges really filled in nicely. Grab this edge here. And you'll be able to see that looks nice and sealed. But again, if you don't like the glossy look, just get the matte. And that is Fusion's Tough Coat Sealer. So lots of options out there for sealing your products. Or some people use the sprays. Like I think it was Vic that just said that in the comments. Use a spray. Fusion doesn't have a spray, but you can get spray poly sealers out there. There we go. As it starts to dry, it really dries quickly. So you've got to be quite quick about laying it down and then, you know, don't touch it because um, once you start to move it when it's dry, your brush will stick and you'll get more brush strokes rather than less. Alrighty, we are done, folks. So let me know um, if you see winners in our comments section because we want to shout out to those winners today. Yes, Christy, I agree. The sealer makes the wood look even more attractive. So there you go. So these are our two projects today. We could put a lovely um, ribbon at the top, probably something burgundy, I guess. Oops, I'm trying not to get my hands on that wet sealer. So our projects from today. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and congratulations to our winners. If you see them there, let me know so I can say congratulations to you. Let's see. Vic, you saw the winners? Maybe they just haven't been pinned yet. Oh, there they are. Let me see. Oh, I can't see them. So there are some winners and someone's even replied to it and I can't click on the comment. Yes, I can. I've got it. I've got it, guys. Mona, Jennifer and Lucretia. So Mona, Jennifer and Lucretia, you're our winners on tonight's live here. Let Essential Stencil know at that email address where they've tagged you that you were a winner on Sharon Hankins Live tonight. And um, they'll send you a $20 gift voucher for essential stencil, which you can spend on stencils, rub on transfers. You might need some brushes, whatever you need for your crafting projects. So thank you so much for watching tonight and hope my voice is sounding a lot better next week. See you guys later. Bye.